Let's revisit the Hot Toys DeLorean. One more time, please. Hello folks, Denobi2 here. Thank you for joining me once again on a visual tour. Yes, I know this is not a Hot Toys uh, scale. I'm just using this as an example to show you where in this video I want to improve the height of the wheels. They should be closer, they should be tucked in. I've listened to your comments, I read the comments, I get it. The last hover conversion I did, the wheels were still too low to the ground. I get it. That was Thomas's design. He heard the responses as well, too, and he's improved on it. He actually has. Look, this design from the original design that I, I, I myself did was phenomenal. It was really great. But he understood that the wheels needed to be closer, lifted to the body. So he, uh, he redesigned it. Uh, drilled a hole into the wheel, uh, thus having the actual wheel uh, snugged more closer. Now, me being uh, adaptable, I'm going to take a part of his last design and I'm going to use it because I love his struts. You see the struts right there? I love it. I love it. I love it. And it works. And this time I get to use the IKEA lights because I want this bad boy to be plugged in. I want unlimited power. Now uh, the screws, uh, those holes right there, I'm, I would, I'm going to be able to uh, run the IKEA power source. I'm going to have to drill, make it a little bit bigger. That way I can get the actual connector slid right through it and pops in right there. And the other hole isn't going to be a big issue because the IKEA lights are going to be covered in. Now that was his original LED light. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. It just pops right out. It, I could maybe use it for another project, who knows. But it slips right out because it wasn't welded or anything. And using the IKEA foam, I can then attach the IKEA light to the actual strut base, like so. And thus, I get in the, uh, that nice warm glow through the uh, actual grills. And the, uh, the, the tube isn't going to be an issue. Now the screws uh, need to be painted, and I'm going to paint the uh, Kia wire there, so that way it's, uh, it's blended in. All right, let's get the DeLorean. This is pretty simple here. All right, uh, it's been prepped up like so, and uh, I'm going to show you how clever how he's improved on it because I love it. I really love it. That's a it's a washer there, to, uh, spacer, and I love how he's able to reincorporate the screw, the actual screw, the the bolt. Uh, to help uh, add support and I'm going to just the strut like so and I'm not gonna glue it I, I'm not gonna glue anything to the wheel that way I can adjust it uh, accordingly I have painted the screws I've painted the cable so you're not gonna see much and and the fact that it kind of sinks in doesn't bother me because once it's dark and it's lit it's not gonna be an issue the front wheel fits just as well too and I love how it's lifted it, uh, it's, it's uh, closer to the body. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, the actual Back to the Future 2 movie used different versions of the DeLorean. So it, 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 in this customization, it's more of taking a creative license. And I know this is the third time uh, I've uh, customized or kit bashed the Hot Toys DeLorean, but man, this is out of all the vehicles, out of all the every, you know, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3. The Hover DeLorean is by far the best. It's my favorite. I'm just, you know, it's the 35th anniversary. Oh, I know. I get to write this off as my 30th anniversary tribute to Back to the Future. Now, uh, I took off Mr. Fusion and the uh, the panel. I'm gonna attach it uh, back on there. And uh, like so, you can kind of see it on there. Slips it right on. This is one of his best designs. Thomas, if you're watching this, this is one of your best designs right there. The way Mr. Fusion kind of snugged right there. And that little uh, white uh, glue, it's not glue, it's its uh, more of that thumbtack. Now this right here, oh, John and uh, David, John the Guzman, oh, buddy, 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 this is it. Um, giving props to John, giving him some credit. Look what he made me, look what he made me, a die cast Back to Future Part 2 2015 license plate barcode. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my god, look at that. Die cast, stainless steel. He did a phenomenal job. Uh, link in the description if you decide you want to get your own die cast license plate from John. Uh, 
he's a he's based out of the Philippines. If you're if you're wondering. Um, well, all right, let's power this bad boy up. Look at that license plate. Look at Mr. Fusion. Ah, oh, look at that warm glow. Ah, oh, love this. Love this mod. I I this is Mark II. I know. I know. You're probably. But Denobi, you've done this. You've done this so many. But look, it I, it keeps getting better. It keeps getting better. Hot Toys, though, they're never going to release the Mark II hover conversion. So this is why this is the uh, what I have to resort to. This is what I look at that. Look how snug those wheels are. Look how oh man. And then the glow, the underneath glow. Mm mm mm. And it's plugged in too. Super bright. Ah, it's gorgeous. Simply gorgeous. I promise no more Mark II <laughs> custom uh, conversions, but I this by far has to be the best. This is, <sighs> all right. Got my acrylic base underneath there that was built by uh, by Thomas. And I got my module case. Finally, this is my second order module case. And it's displayed and, uh, and powered up. <sighs> simply, simply wonderful. Oh, all right, all right, all right. What, what if? What if we customize it to the Mark III? The Mark III, the Old West. Let's do it. Yes, the Mark III. The Mark III is what we're gonna focus on. Let's tackle on, let's tackle that transistor box. First thing is first, I had to hire a 3D artist to design a 3D model, uh, thus that I am able to print. I'm not a 3D printer, I outsource everything. Found a guy that can resin print the transistor box that we're gonna be using on this Mark III conversion. And I thought he did a good job on it. I thought he did. Now, I suck at painting, but I did the best I could. I, you know, it's, you know, apologies, it's it's not as high def as I wanted the, the actual paint application or the paint scheme. But I think from a distance, if you squint your eyes, it's pretty kick-ass. I did add some more tchotchkes uh, to it, some uh, little acrylic bulbs and tubes on it to kind of blend it in. I did add some wiring onto it to give it that realistic look. I, again, from a distance, that transistor box is uh, the bomb. Ah, uh, I said the bomb, no. Uh, Thomas here, again, uh, printed uh, railroad wheels here. And uh, he sent them to me. I requested them and I'm going to be painting. This is simple. This is going to be a simple paint job. Acrylic paint, black satin paint. I'm going to be painting the uh, the train wheels. Nice heavy coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is the best. This is this this type of, of, of painting I enjoy because it doesn't have to be wheel. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be detailed. You can go as rough as you want because they're train wheels. Uh, Thomas did also print me some one six scale railroads. Look at that, railroad tracks. Bang up job on there. And uh, he also had the uh, platforms, I guess you would call those the railroad planks with the, with the clippings. I'm not sure what you would call that. Sorry, I'm not a train engineer. Uh, but I'm gonna make it work uh, and I'm gonna give that a nice coat an acrylic silver coat on there uh, I, I want to uh, it'll be more of the base the the acrylic silver paint will be more of the base because I'm gonna rust I'm gonna add some phenomenal rust to all this but you got to give it that first coat so that is some silver acrylic paint you can get that at Walmart for like a couple bucks uh, the following day the wheels have been painted black and I'm going to use my secret ingredient of real rust. Now this right here is oxidizing iron paint. I love making rust. Mm -mm -mm. Give me some rust, real rust, not that fake crap. Iron paint with uh, mixed in with some white vinegar right there as a, as a base to activate the rust components on there. Now, it's it's not an exact science how you make this uh, this solution, but you take some of that thick iron paint right there. You see how it's kind of thick and, and and cruddy. Mix in some vinegar, and you want to start um, applying this uh, to your to your wheels or to anything that you plan on rusting out. You want to mix it in right. Oh, you gotta see. I was about to just put the brush in there because I know this stuff starts to activate pretty quick. So you gotta mix it in, make it kind of soupy and sloshy, and then just apply it to where you want real rust to form. 
Now the rust does take about 12 hours, so I'm gonna apply all this stuff here. Apply it to the wheels, Any anything I, that I, I want that rust look. So there you go. And it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can go as messy as you want, especially like, like the railroad tracks. I want those to be as messy as possible. Um, that way, uh, when the rust starts to activate, it starts to look good. I love it. I, it's, it's one of my favorite things to, to apply, uh, apply rust. Following day, and the rust has activated, and you can kind of see how the colors have changed now. So it doesn't look so much of a, a 3D printed part, but it, it also gives it that realistic look, especially the wheels. Look at those train wheels. Look how awesome those things look. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I have a rag here so I can take off some of the excess rust. Kind of give it that realistic look. And then apply, and then once I assemble the tracks, it looks good. Now I'm missing something. I need the DeLorean. The DeLorean is the next step. Where's my DeLorean? <laughs> You know, it, uh, it it only makes sense that uh, I would bury the DeLorean 47 miles outside of Las Vegas uh, to keep it safe and uh, to help recreate the Mark III conversion. Hot Toys Mark III conversion. Let's check it out. Uh, it can be uh, a little bit dangerous here. Now the front wheel, that is a spacer right there. You're gonna need a spacer because uh, the uh, if you don't use a spacer, the train wheels are, are stuck in a little bit too tight in the front. And they're not gonna sit on the train tracks very well. The backs are fine. The back wheels work perfectly fine. And again, using the existing bolts, it'll keep the, uh, the wheels up. The same way I was able to keep the hover converted parts up, the bolts. Uh, help support the train wheels and so far it's looking good and you can kind of see it's kind of dirty and dusty I'm not gonna clean any of that I, I I like that I really really do now the transistor you see how the I glued on some leather straps now the straps are not gonna go through the hood I don't it's not gonna fit I've tried multiple angles and it's not gonna work but if it, if the straps actually just sit on top of the hood of the roof it helps sell the illusion um, and they have to be that thick. I've looked at multiple production stills, and it just it has to be that thick. Now that what you saw was was a poster tack. I don't use any glue, and that'll help keep the transistor box from sliding off the uh, the hood of the roof. Now I'm going to replace this existing Mr. Fusion because I have one that's a little bit got a, a nice coat of paint, been improved. I'm going to slip that right on there, and yeah. That one's a little bit tight. I think I used a little bit too hot, too much hot glue. And the sticker that I used, that is a printed 2015 license plate. I'm going to be using a die-cast license plate from John de Guzman. <laughs> Again, link in the description if you want to get your very own die-cast license plate. It sticks in right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this one and this this version of, of the uh, the DeLorean 
I don't mind it getting dirty. It doesn't bother me one bit. And let's assemble the train tracks for some uh, ex exterior on location shots on there. Do a little, uh, little 360 uh, view there. And let's get the DeLorean on here. And look at that. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. That, my friends, is a kick ass Hot Toys. Mark III converted DeLorean, and that just looks awesome. That just really, really looks awesome. I gotta say, I gotta say, it's this is bad. <laughs> this is badass. <laughs> I really, really do love this. This came out really nice. Something about those train wheels in the old west, and and just being out outdoors filming this on on train tracks. I, I sent a message to, to Thomas. I, I really wish those train tracks were a lot longer because I probably would have pushed this down. <laughs> I probably would have just laid on the ground and played with it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's go back home and let's get this bad boy displayed where its final resting place will be inside my module case. And uh, I wanted to recreate the scene of Marty holding the hoverboard as he's being pushed by the locomotive and he's going to slip the hoverboard to Doc Brown so that he can save his beloved Clara. I love this shot. This pose right here just works. And that back there is the Diamond Select uh, Mark II uh, DeLorean with the Hover DeLorean Mark II levitated. Now, the Mark II that's being levitated here is, is the scene where uh, Doc Brown uh, is in shock as he sees that the hoverboard gang has crashed through the uh, um, the windows of the courthouse and Marty has the bag of the, the sports helmet. So that was my interpretation. So scene from, Mark, uh, from Back to Future Part 2, scene from Part 3. This was fun. This was a lot of fun. I, I almost wish I had a 1-6 scale locomotive to, to push this bad boy, but uh, it, it came out really nice. I'm, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> like, subscribe, leave your comments below. And you know what? I always appreciate you folks watching. Thank you.